The crossbench has been calling for reform for years. Trust in government in Australia is at an all-time low. My community in Curtin sent me here with a mandate to hold our politicians and our political processes to a higher standard. I again call on the House to protect voters from misleading and deceptive political advertising. We're trying to drain the swamp, essentially. We're trying to improve the quality of the politics that we have in Canberra. The presence of an unprecedented contingent of independent MPs with similar ambitions to reform the way politics is done has changed the nature of the House of Representatives since the 2022 election. The Teal independents have worked cooperatively to push the complex issues on which they campaigned, climate change, better government accountability and the treatment of women. On the issue of electoral integrity, they've split up the issues, then backed each other on them. Well, sadly, the integrity piece is large. There is a lot of reform needed to our current system to actually increase accountability and transparency. From Monique Ryan to Helen Haynes to Kate Cheney, we are all putting forward proposals to the government. So really, uh, you know, the ball is in the Albanese government's court. The integrity piece, as Ali Stegall puts it, is indeed large. The dominant question in politics used to just be about money and particularly about donations to political parties and their capacity to encourage corruption. But these days, the integrity piece is also about truth. What we saw in the referendum is people really concerned about misinformation and disinformation. But that's not the first time it's happened. We've had Medi-Scare and death taxes before. And, and again and again, we hear that people don't want to be lied to by politicians. Zali Stegall, who entered Parliament in 2019, has been the victim of some of that false advertising during election campaigns, but survived to tell the tale and to try to get some change into the system. It should not be allowed to scam voters. So again, uh, there is no reason why we can protect consumers in the consumer advertising, but not do it for political topics. Misinformation was just one of the reasonably new issues that has been under scrutiny by the Parliament's powerful Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters. I think what we've had in the JSCAM work this term is terms of reference given to us from the government that are really interested in genuine electoral reform. But the presence of the independents has changed the discussion. 99.6% of Australians are not a member of a major political party, but our electoral system really favours those, those major parties. We don't let Coles and um, Woolies make the laws about who can get into the grocery market. Richard Dennis heads the Australia Institute, which has long been an advocate for electoral funding reform, but which has changed its view on things like caps on donations in light of a shift in the way funding laws affect large incumbent parties and new entrants. Donations are not the dominant form of funding anymore. In Victoria, where there's really good data available, 94% of, of the revenue is coming from non-donations. It's coming from uh, membership fees, it's coming from affiliation fees, it's coming from $10,000 dinners with, with ministers and premiers, and it's even coming from a tithe on uh, Labor MPs and, and staffers. The way it's been designed, uh, compelling or obliging or uh, requiring your staff to give money to your party doesn't get captured by the definition of a donation in Victoria. In its interim report, the JSCEM committee has already proposed a range of changes to donations laws, including imposing a cap on donations from individuals, business and so-called third parties, as well as requiring real-time disclosure of donations and an increase in public funding. The caps issue is contentious. The issue of caps is really difficult because the problem with caps uh, means that you are really entrenching incumbent advantage. So if you are already elected, it will be much easier to be re-elected rather than a new player in the field uh, butting up against caps when it comes to donation caps and or campaign spending caps. 
On the other side of that coin is the concern that you have someone like Clive Palmer willing to throw $100 million at an election campaign to influence the outcome. The committee will hand down its final report as early as next week and the government has foreshadowed new laws to deal with at least some of the issues raised early next year. But there is uncertainty over whether the major parties will join forces to enact rules that benefit them or whether they really embrace change. Communities are concerned that an electoral reform package could be put up that embeds the major parties and makes it very difficult for new challenges to, to come forward. But I do think that, um, that the government is willing to do some work on truth and transparency and they could get that legislation through really quickly with the support of the crossbench and the Greens. There is absolutely a grave concern that the major parties may well end up doing a deal and colluding to essentially preserve the status quo. However, if such a deal is done, some observers believe it could actually provide an opportunity to the Teals at the next election. If Labor does a deal with the Coalition, I think that will shoot the issue of transparency and money in politics right back up to the top of the agenda rather than making it go away. The clock is ticking. We're halfway through this term of government um, and if we don't want to see the next election campaign, likely in 2025, to be a, a Trump-style uh, descent into fake information, misinformation, hidden money uh, and uh, just crazy politics, we need to act now to implement legislation, to implement the system so that everyone can go at the next election prepared and we can have a competitive playing field and we can actually get the best of liberal democracy. Thanks for watching. Visit australiainstitute.org.au for all our latest research, commentary and analysis, as well as details for upcoming events and webinars.